What's going on, Warriors? And welcome back to another episode from Reach Home Recovery. Today, we're talking about a very important and sensitive topic. Today is September 10th, and September 10th is recognized as Global Suicide Prevention Day. It's important that I note that because that's the core of this video here. See, what can happen is when you're consistently, over a long period of time, exposed to a to narcissistic abuse, to toxic individuals, sometimes you can internalize those negative thought patterns. And if that does happen in extreme cases, it can lead to suicidal thoughts infiltrating your mind. So much so that unfortunately, some people actually do act on it. First and foremost, I'm just going to put it right out there. This video is not for everybody. Some of y'all are just hurting from a narcissist, narcissist or a toxic individual but not to the level where thoughts like this would infiltrate your mind. I'm talking more so to my people that have been in it for years, decades even. I'm talking about people that sometimes have even had to deal with it for a lifetime. Some people had narcissistic parents, then in their adulthood, hopscotched into narcissistic relationships so they were never able to get, get away from it. So when you have all that constant negativity bombarding you, over extended period of time, sometimes multiple partners, sometimes even parental figures, then that's how these extremely hurtful and negative thoughts can invade. See, the narcissist wants to break you down. They, they always did. When they first saw you, they saw your purity, they saw you just radiating goodness, and they thought to themselves, I need to break that individual down to a point that's either like me or lower than me. So, they get in contact, they infiltrate your life, they build you up with the love bomb and mirroring, and then they strategically abuse you to whittle away the best parts of you. But in that abuse process, that whittling down process, they have to get you to believe that you're not good enough, that you're not worthy, that you somehow deserve this treatment. Now, where we get into trouble is we're the exact opposite of the narcissist. We don't have that false self to protect us, that false persona to have us on guard against all that negativity and all that attack. So what may happen is sometimes we internalize the effects of the abuse. And when we're internalizing the effects of those, that abuse, that negativity starts to ruminate in our own heads. Now, it doesn't happen overnight. You're too powerful for that. There's too much strength and resilience in you just for you to fall from one, one episode of abuse, one episode of mistreatment. That's not going to happen. This is a slow process. It's kind of like the indoctrination into a full-blown abuse. They do it little by little over time. And at the end, trying to overwhelm you. This is what I want us to liken it to. I want you to liken it to a flood. A flood of negative thoughts looking to overwhelm your thinking processes. Now, the enemy's goal is to overwhelm your mind just for the cascade of negative thoughts. Just unrelenting, inescapable in your mindset. That's what this flood is. But it starts slowly. It starts with just a single drop. That first drop of water is that first instance, that first episode of abuse. Now, this first episode will send ripples through your mind. This first episode is the first instance in where that love bomb, that love facade that was put on is disturbed. What it also does is it'll plant the seed in you of, hey, what did I do to disturb this? What did I do to mess this up? Now, eventually those ripples will fade and things will start to go back to a pseudo normal like they, like they used to be. But your capacity for abuse, your capacity to take in that negative energy has just increased. So now the next episode of abuse, there are several drops of water. The abuse is more intense. There's more negativity that you take in. So now it goes from I did something to I definitely know I did something. I'm flawed in such a way. And now I have to work harder in order to make this relationship thing work. And again, your capacity to take in more negative thoughts has increased. Now the next level of abuse, there's buckets of negative energy being dumped into your mind. I'm talking about hurricane level abuse just being dumped in. 
Now you're absorbing the thoughts of nothing I do is good enough to make this relationship thing last. There's no hope for this relationship. Again, capacity increases. Now at this final stage of the process is the most dangerous. Now you're at the flood stage. And if you made it to the stage, you've completely internalized the effects of that toxic abuse. And it's called a flood because now the abuser doesn't even need to be there. You'll replay the negative thoughts in your own mind. And as you ruminate, as you replay these thoughts, they get worse and worse just based off the initial and negative investment that that abuser made. It's self-inflicted abuse. It's non-stop, relentless torment taking place in your own mind. You go from the thoughts of nothing was ever good enough to I was never good enough. You go from there was no hope in this relationship to I'll never be compatible with anybody. And you start to lose all hope in general. Now, as this unrelenting force of negative energy is battering your mind 24 seven, the enemy plays a very insidious trick. Now, the enemy knows that he himself can't kill you. So he introduces an idea to get you to stop you. That's when the idea of suicidal thoughts starts to infiltrate. Now, what makes it so insidious, what makes it so devious, is that it comes across as a comforting idea. It, it tells you that the torment that's going on in your mind can be stopped if you do that act. And I need you to understand that's a lie straight from the pit of hell. I need us to understand that those toxic thoughts were introduced to us by a narcissistic or toxic outside source in the first place. You don't destroy yourself to get rid of the onslaught of toxic thoughts. You get rid of the enemy. You get rid of the negativity that's ruminating in your mind. And you don't have to do this by yourself. You didn't get to this position by yourself. There was always an outside source pumping that negativity in. So what we need to do is connect with our source, get spiritually reconnected and get help from our heavenly father. Some of y'all asking, how do I know it's gonna work? It's written right here in the Bible. To get that confirmation, let's jump to Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19. We're gonna read the portion that says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him now, we've been talking about that flood in your mental processes the whole time. So when that enemy comes upon you, the Lord, your heavenly father, is going to lift up a standard against him. Understand what that standard is. The standard is the word of God. The standard is the presence of God. The standard is your relationship you have with the heavenly father, with the Holy Spirit. And he can't stand up to that. Oh, you need more confirmation. It don't take long. Go down two verses to Isaiah 59, verse 21. And it reads, As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them. My spirit who is upon you and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord from this time and forevermore. You just got a covenant. A covenant from the Lord himself that said, not only is he not going to depart from you, not only is that power not only going to be put in you, but it's going to be put in your kids and your kids' kids. The inheritance you're about to receive is going to give you grace and favor for your babies and your great-grandbabies. Now is not the time to quit. Now is the time to keep fighting the good fight. Don't be weary in your good doing because your healing, your recovery, your full restoration for the lineage of your family line is right around the corner. You have to keep pressing forward. Purge those negative thoughts from the enemy from your mind. Now, like I said before, this video ain't for everybody. But if you needed this message, I need you to claim it. I don't need likes, subscribes, follows. I don't need none of that. I need you to speak it over your life. I need you to speak it into existence. Your family needs you. The world needs you. There's a purpose that you're needed to fulfill. So if you got time, go back in Isaiah chapter 59. We went through verses 19 and verses 21. Get that Isaiah 59 blessing over your life. 
let us purge this spirit, this evil spirit of suicide from our lives. With that being said, I'm going to go ahead and cut this video. I thank you for the time of fellowship. And if anybody out there is watching, is struggling with that infiltration of suicidal thoughts, I'm going to be praying for you. You got the power to beat this thing. You already overcame it and you don't even know. I love y'all. Till the next time. Peace.